is Priya Senecal, and I am a psychotherapist over at CAPS. I am passionate about supporting students and exploring how their intimate relationships, sex, sexuality, and desire are connected to their emotional well being and mental health. So, today I'm going to share six tips to help you navigate sexual self care and desire with other people amidst social distancing. So, tip one is just about setting aside time to stay connected with other people, whether this is a partner or a friend or someone you've been hooking up with. It's about getting creative and carving out sacred time to be able to spend together. Tip two is about taking time to set the mood together. Think about the things that you find erotic or that turn you on and share them with your partner or partners. Um, do that in a way that feels safe to you. It can feel vulnerable to first talk about desire, but it can also improve your connection with other people. And it can be so in a way that will make you feel more desire. Tip three is about setting boundaries and communicating. I could spend hours talking just about this one, this one tip, um, but this is an important thing to think about. Thinking about the ways in which you're going to want to use your time, thinking about what your limits are, thinking about what your desires are, and communicating those with your partner or partners. Um, something that can be helpful is to think about the five W's. Go back to elementary school days when you learn who, what, when, where, why, and how, um, and making sure that you think about each of those things when you're having a conversation about what it is that you're wanting and what some, what some of your limits might be. Um, it's important to note that you're on the same page as the other person or people that you're going to be involved with and using a structure like that can help you to do that. So tip four is about exploring a new fetish or kink. So social distancing has presented opportunity to explore sex and eroticism in ways that we haven't maybe done before. So this can be an opportunity to try something different than you have in the past. It can involve exploring a fetish. Think of a fetish as something you find erotic um, or exploring uh, a kink. It can be, a kink is more the thing that you're doing. So for instance, someone can have a foot fetish and enjoy worshiping feet as their kink. So fetishes and kinks are not shameful and exploring them together can bring you closer to your partner and it can increase desire. So have fun with it and just always make sure that your interactions are safe, sane, and consensual. Next is digital intimacy. So this is related to tip four, but it, tip five is encouraging you to think about ways to explore intimacy <clears throat> and sexual desire digitally. So this could be through video apps, it could be through texting, could be using sex toys that link to your, you and your partner's phone so that you can control them with each other. Um, but digital intimacy also doesn't have to be sexual if you don't want it to be. There's devices and apps out there that are also helping people to fulfill this like desire for touch. I think for so many of us, we're not able to see the people that we used to see. And just that longing of, of connection, of being held or getting a hug, we are not able to have that. And there are devices out there that will help um, kind of fill that void for folks. Uh, so look into it, get creative, have fun with it. Um, it'll help you to feel more connected to other people if you're able to do that. Tip six is about showing vulnerability. So Brene Brown says this best, showing vulnerability can foster connection. Taking time to express your vulnerability can open up an opportunity to be more intimate with another person, and that can be erotic too. You can show vulnerability in a way that works for the connection you have with the other person, and it doesn't have to mean that you necessarily share something sexual. It could be that you share your creative projects, your art, your music, or it could also be erotic. It could be that you share an erotic memory you have, or a fantasy, or an experience with them that you would like to have. All in all, it's just important to know that there's no one right way to explore sexual intimacy and desire, and that it's just important to do it in a way that feels safe and consensual for you and other people that are involved. Thank you so, so much for watching this video, and I hope you found these strategies helpful. If you haven't already, feel free to check out part one, which is exploring sexual self-care on your own. 
Thank you so much. Take care.